Mr. Brown, just two and a half months ago, it was revealed that your 18-month-old son, Colby, may not be your biological child, even though you currently have full custody. Yes, Your Honor. Today, you've dragged Ms. Stewart to court to prove that you are Colby's father because you fear if you are not, you will lose him for good. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Stewart, you admit you kept the secret from Mr. Brown but claim the truth is the truth. And the fact is, you were secretly cheating on him and you appear in court today to prove that the other man is the father. Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Brown, tell us, what's at stake for you today? Everything's at stake, Your Honor. My whole entire family knows him as theirs. I have two grandmas that have Alzheimer's that know him as their grandsons. My 14-year-old son knows him as his little brother. My house is a more stable home for him. It's a place where he's taken care of, and I know it's the better thing for him. So, Ms. Stewart, you're saying that you know for certain that he's not Mr. I'm Brown's not. biological child. I'm 100% sure he's not the father. And you understand what's at stake, though. You understand that Mr. Brown is saying he has a healthy, happy upbringing in his I home. I know he's with me and when he's gonna be happy and healthy. I can provide that for my son because I've been working my butt off every day going without seeing my son. I see him once a week. What's that to a mom who has raised and gave birth to that son? Mr. Brown, you have custody. I so how did you even find this out? Well, because after she moved out, she asked me if I wanted him for a couple days while she was moving her things out. She called the tell me when she was coming, and I told her that I wasn't going to give him back at that point in time because I knew what my rights were. I knew that the living situations at my household Yeah, I have a right to see my son. Where she was at. I mean, I've got a five-bedroom home where he's got his own playroom, he's got his own bedroom. When did she say to you, but this is not your child? right then and there. But she waited almost five days before she brought the cops to my house. Mm -hmm. If it's not my kid, why didn't you come that day with the cops? So what happened when she brought the police to your house? You know, at, by that time, I'd already talked to one district attorney and three police officers who told me the same thing that I already knew, that by law, I did not have to give him back due to the fact I signed the paternity affidavit. I was on the birth certificate. And the cop that she brought was probably the only one on the force she could get to side with her. And he came and told me it was in my best judgment that I give the child back. And I asked him if it was in, you know, my best judgment or if by law I had to. And he said in his opinion he thought that I needed to, but there was nothing he could do about it. So therefore I asked the officer to please leave my residence because there was nothing he could do. You were trying to take my son away from me, and that's what you did, exactly. Rip my son from my life, from my home. And when the results are saying that you are not the father, I am leaving today with my son. That is guaranteed. And you're so confident. Yeah, I am confident, because he don't look like you. He don't look like anybody else in the family. He looks like the supposed father and the other supposed father's the other baby. What did you say exactly to Mr. Brown that day? I'm just upset and hurt because he took my son from me. And that is when I told him, texted him, said, okay, I said, he is not your son. I know I should have told you in the long run, but that is not your son. That, that was he, after she lived in my household for over three years and mooched off my family. No, I never mooched off your family. It's more like your family was given to me. <laughs> They're being generous. Miss Stewart, <laughs> why did you wait so long to tell him? Like, why not tell him before so he would have never had the child in the first place? <laughs> because your honor, your Honor, I really truly believe that my son was Mr. Brown's. Because at that time, yes, I was, I went to another friend to comfort me. Because at this time, Mr. Brown and I had decided to take a break. So I went in that time and talked to a friend like I always do. Comfort and friends. And one thing led to another and my son was conceived June 13th. So honestly, when my son was born, my son did look like Mr. Brown and it looked like the sum of his family. So that is why I have withheld, because I was happy, I was in love with him, and the fact that my son was going to be raised up in a good environment and good home, thinking that I had a good man on my hands. What, what changed? What changed was when he decided to take my son from me. So you broke up, and then he wanted custody? Yes. So if you had me. stayed in the relationship, 
would you have ever told him that this may not be his child? No, because I honestly, because being with a good man like Mr. Brown, same thing. is this that you don't believe he's the father or you're just unhappy that you broke up and he took the child? No, I believe that he is not the father of my son. I'm a thousand percent sure. And I know the truth needed to come out. It should have been sooner than later, but it came out. What was your reaction, Mr. Brown? You're lying, I don't believe I, that. Or did you think, I, well, yeah, you were kind of getting missing back then. I was dumbfounded, Your Honor. I was dumbfounded. I, did, I didn't know what to think. I mean, I, I've lost a lot of sleep. I've shed a lot of tears over this whole situation. I mean, I'm the only thing that, that, that my boy's got. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. When you first got the news from her and she dropped this bomb on you, did you say, I want a DNA test? Did you think to get a DNA test? Yes, Your Honor. I called uh, DHS and talked to them and they informed me that I needed to call Child Support Recovery because that's who does the DNA test in the state that we live in. When I went down and filled out the paperwork, once they started running it, they informed me that I couldn't do the DNA test because Ms. Stewart had already filed child support on me. Wait, now, you're saying he's not the child's biological father and you know that for certain, yes. and yet you've filed to try to get him to pay child support? How does he get an open case? I don't know, Your Honor. I'm not even quite sure. I don't understand that. But I never went and I never told them that he was a father and that I wanted child support from him because I even told DHS and the child support recovery that I did not want any money from him. And if he has custody, why is he paying support anyway? He don't. They can't get it from me. One, because she doesn't have him. And two, because I'm on disability. So, Mr. Brown, you have a witness. I'd like to hear from her. Please stand, ma'am. State your name. Sarah Teske. Miss Teske, thank you for joining us. You are... I'm his girlfriend. This is between me and Mr. Brown, not me and Miss Teske well, and Ms. Mr. Teske. Brown. Well, Miss Teske takes care of your son, you don't. Yeah, and Miss Teske ain't supposed to be around our son. Yeah. Okay, all right, yeah. now I know what it's about. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Moving That's forward. Miss Teske is supposed to be around yeah. Billy Andre yeah. JT. Moving forward, yeah. moving forward. So Miss Teske, what, what do you have to add? What do you know about this situation? Well, I know that right now I am both emotionally and financially involved in this whole situation. I love this man with all my heart. I know that he loves Colby with all his heart. He takes very good care of him. He, he's the best father in the world to that little boy. And I know this is going to devastate him completely if that's not his son. And I know the other gentleman that is supposedly the father. I've known him for a couple of years, actually, and I've actually talked to him. So I do know that they have slept together because he did admit that to me. He didn't tell me around the time frame or anything like that, but he did admit it. Did the other him. guy think he was the father? No. He said he doesn't believe Ms. Stewart whatsoever. So, Ms. Stewart, let me ask you again. Did you go down and file paperwork or sign anything no, requesting Your child support? No, Your Honor, because I went down myself to see if I can get this DNA started. And they said that we couldn't do nothing because he has signed the paternity affidavit. As you were going through the process, did you tell any government agency, this is the father? The father is Mr. Brown? No, Your Honor. Jerome, this ain't adding up. Your Honor, she, she's, she's still getting all kinds of benefits for Kobe, and she doesn't even have him. That then sheds some light on why they would be coming after Mr. Brown for child support if you're receiving some type of state assistance. They want their money back. Yeah. Yeah. So, Mr. Brown? Yes, Your Honor? You are here requesting a DNA test to prove that you are Colby's biological father. Yes, Your Honor. With the understanding that the result may indicate that you are not the biological father. Yes, Your Honor. But you are the current legal father of record because you're on the birth certificate and you have custody. Yep. So you do understand that you are basically putting yourself out there 
in a way that you would not have to because in the eyes of the law, you are his bi... You're, you're his legal father. Yes, Your Honor. It, it doesn't matter whether or not you're his biological father. When you execute and you put your name on that birth certificate, you're saying, I'm responsible for this child. This child is mine. That's why you have custody right now. So why is it that you're continuing this pursuit and pressing this issue? Because Miss Stewart named him after my father, who's deceased. Mm. He's got my father's full name in his name. Mm. Well, like I said, I thought and believed he was your son. But as our son got older, I started realizing he was not your son. Kobe's got two middle names, which was my dad's first and middle name, and then, of course, my last name. So my dad's whole name is in Kobe's name. And I honestly feel that me and Kobe both deserve a right to know. Mm. Okay. That I understand. You just want... You want the truth. Yes, Your Honor. And you are willing to put it all on the line for the truth. I've raised that little boy for, eight, for 18 months, almost 19 months. That little well, boy's my world. That little boy's going home with me tonight. No, he's not, because he's going home with me. When it determines that he is, that you are not the father, he is going home with me today. Miss Stewart, you do understand if there is a custody order in effect, you could get into a little bit of trouble if you try to just take your son. I mean, one thing we can say is it is your son. So I want to caution you to not do anything out of emotion or just to stick it to Mr. Brown, revenge, that will put your freedom in jeopardy. Because then, what are you gonna do? He gonna go right back to Mr. Brown's. You have to handle things the right way, even as hard as it may be. I see this is making you very emotional, and I know, as a mother, it must be difficult to be without your son. It is. But, Your Honor, she has the right to come see him anytime. There's open-door policy in my but house. But it's so sad that you don't let me have a one-on-one -on -one with my son. No, because You don't let me take told... my son for a weekend. Every mom should have every right to have their son for a weekend. And, you know, I do have every right. That boy is my world. And it's like you guys don't give a crap about how I feel or how it feels to not have my son. Uh, but yeah, I know you exactly know how you feel. You I know exactly of... how you feel. No, you don't, because yes, if you I did, do. then you would understand and yes, tell I Mr. Do. Brown that I should have every right to that boy. Because he... Where, where are you living at and where's he living at right now? And you know that's what's best for him. If, if Mr. Brown is not the biological father today, does the other gentleman... Does he want to be involved in Colby's life? Your Honor, I talked to the supposed other father. He said he would... If the results came out that Mr. Brown was not the father, then he would like to step up and be there and do what he can. All right, I think it's time for the results, Jerome. <laughs> These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Brown versus Stewart, when it comes to 15-month-old Colby Brown, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Brown, you are not the father. Oh I told you. I told you. Mr. Brown, you need to sit down. You need to take a seat. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I just don't understand how someone could do that to somebody. 18 months, it's a long time. It's a long time. He's still my boy. Miss Stewart? You said all along that you didn't believe he was Mr. Brown's biological child. No. And you know for certain it is this other gentleman. Yes, Your Honor. This court has, of course, provided you with the answers we're here to provide, which is the DNA testing and results. But now 
this case will have to continue in your home state. The custody order that is in place is based upon his legal right acknowledgement that he's the father. He's on the birth certificate. There's no other way to cut it. This cake is baked. <laughs> so you can't just remove the child from his home. You're going to have to go through the process. And even if the court determines that he remain in his home, the court has that discretion. And let me give you a news flash. If you've ever handled anything in the court system, you know it's not gonna happen overnight. Right? No. Right? Right. right. Ms. Shimolinsky, you say you had a loving five-year relationship with the defendant's son, Georgie, who unfortunately died in a motorcycle accident. You claim the defendants initially accepted your son, Xavier, but now need proof that they are Xavier's grandparents. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mrs. Brown and Mr. Long, you say you don't know Ms. Shimolinsky and claim your son was never in a relationship with her. You believe she has made up a fairy tale love affair with Georgie and he is not Xavier's father. Is that correct? Yes, yes Your Honor. Honor. So, Ms. Shimolinsky, what is riding on today's results for you and your son? Um, my son needs his family. He, he calls her Nana and she's been in his life. Uh... We need answers. He has, he has nobody. Okay, let's keep it real, please. Okay? Take me to the day you found out Georgie passed. I was devastated. Heartbroken. Confused. But why... I just... I, I just... Make me understand one thing. Why didn't I know about you? I don't understand why you didn't know about me either. Okay, that's not an answer. Five-year relationship. Why don't I know about you? Never heard of her. I've never seen you did in my you, house. Did you ever he, ask Georgie why you haven't introduced me yeah, to your no, parents? No, because we, we were just friends. It was like a sexual friendship that we had for so many years. Like, so how, for five years? Yeah. So but how did you find out he Was he having away? a girlfriend? He had a girlfriend. Yeah, I know his girlfriend. no matter who we were with, we still had sexual relations. And so who told you he passed away? My sister. I just kept calling his phone and calling his phone and he wasn't answering. Now, at that point that you found out that he passed, did you call his parents or you felt like you didn't no, know them? No, I didn't them? have their numbers. I don't know I her. Didn't, I didn't yeah. know her. I met her after Georgie passed. So, at what point did you finally decide I need to reach out to his parents because... She didn't. I reached they out may to be her. Spirit. Oh. Do you I, reach reached out, out? I reached out to her. Okay, my son is not here. He's not here. Okay? I'm picking up where he left off. Take mm -hmm. your time. I know it's hard. Go right. ahead. Because basically, I'll... basically, we found out when he uh, he sent he actually sent me a picture or a text message when I was talking to him one time, and he sent me a picture and he said, um, "Dad, what, what do you think? It, this could be my kid." And I, and I told him at that time that you know I really couldn't tell from the picture. How old was Xavier when you got that text? A year old, because he um, he came to me also, so I know everyone that he interacted with. Okay. I've never seen her before. Oh, I was just about to ask you. Yes. Is it your testimony uh -huh. you never met Ms. Shemelinsky? No. Did your son ever mention Ms. Shemelinsky? No. What had happened was she says that this baby's Georgie's. Two years passed. And the only reason why I pursued this test is because a friend of Georgie's, very close friend, told him... Listen, you need to find out if this baby is you... Georgie. So, it's other people in the neighborhood must be saying something because he came to me after two years. Okay. Okay? He brought this to my attention. It, it went over my head. You told me that he looks like all your other grandkids. My grandkids are biracial. That, but that's what you said. He has Georgie's nose. My, my he... grandkids are biracial. I don't want to look at this baby and see something that's not there. Why are you so upset, Ms. Shemelinsky? Because it hurts. Because you Why, feel like George, they don't know? Because you know? want it to be George. She wants it to be Georgie's. He and Georgie was doing a home DNA test a couple months before he had passed. And we couldn't come up with the money. So, <laughs> after, I think it was like five months... But, yeah. Then he had passed away. So then... You should have came to me. To you should have came to me then. How old was Xavier when Georgie died? 
He was two weeks before he turned one. Okay. Did Georgie accept Xavier? Did they have a relationship? He saw him a couple times. They took pictures together and... Five-year relationship? You only saw him a couple times? No, yeah. with the baby. <laughs> Why did he only see the baby a couple times when he was almost because a he, year he old? He wasn't positive if it was if it was his or not. So he didn't want to get too too close, you know? He didn't. He just wanted to know if the baby was his. When did you tell Georgie? When did you tell Georgie you had, you had a baby? When the baby was 5 months old, Georgie came to me and t called me and said, "Your son has my nose." And I said, "Oh my god, you're right." He came you to you right. and said, "He, he said, said that? your son has my nose." It's out the blue. Yeah, when the baby was five, six months old. So the truth is, you don't know for sure, Ms. No. Chemelinsky. You really don't. No. Okay, so let's just get down to the bottom line. Just the older You don't kid. know for sure. Right. The so you and kid. Georgie tried to figure out the timeline and tried to execute a test to get the answer. Right. Unfortunately, due to his untimely death and the fact that the specimen had expired, you were unable to complete that test. Right. Yes, Your Honor. He took the initiative as a young... Black man, which usually would run the other way, <laughs> you know, and took the initiative and wanted to find out if this baby was his. Ms. Shemalinsky, I, I want to ask you, and I have to ask this respectfully, how many other possible fathers are there? There's just one. So just one other possible oh. person. Mm -hmm. It's wait Georgie a minute, wait, 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 wait. Come on now, we here to get the truth. We here to get everything out in the open. We yeah. here to find out if my son has a child. Mrs. Brown. We here to find out. I'm a grandmom of your baby. What are you asserting, Miss Brown, that there are more men than just one additional man? One. It can't be. So there's one other man besides How are Georgie. You me oh, it's one, so it's one other, are you saying? Yeah, it's, be, it's him and, and the oh, other guy. Oh, one other man. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No. Did you ever tell the other guy? That... He had passed away when I was five months pregnant. Oh. He had got murdered. Oh, so, good Lord. Um, a family member of mine had contacted his family. They did not respond until Xavier turned two. And they said, if I come up with the money, then they'll do the test. So, both mm. potential fathers of this beautiful little boy ha have passed away? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. Wow. So, what happened to the parents? I can't contact... Like, a friend of mine contacted his sister. And they seem like they don't want nothing to do with it. And so... Is I, that why you've reached out to... I just wanted both of them, both the grandparents, you know, to know. Because they um, both don't have the... They okay. both lost a child. We all want to know, but you can't delusion yourself. Georgie was popular. I'm gonna tell you like it is. Very Georgie popular. was very popular. And a, a good, lot of women wouldn't person. mind having Georgie's baby. He's not here to defend himself as far as saying, no, you're wrong, you're wrong. How many other women could have said the same thing? Because, you know, so I'm here. I'm here to find out. Miss Shemelinsky, when you closed. talk to Xavier about his father, he's two now, mm -hmm. do you talk to him about his father? Who do you tell him his father is? He, I tell him Georgie's. See, that's the problem. What do you that's tell the problem. him? That he watches his videos and I say, you know, that's, that's daddy. And he points to the videos and says daddy. Mm -hmm. He calls him daddy. Because oh, either way, Georgie told me no matter what the results were when he was alive, that he was going to be in his life. Really? He, yes. I Georgie told, couldn't even take care of himself. I know. I understand that. And I told you that the day the, before the funeral. He wanted it. I can see that he wanted it. But he wasn't going to just claim it. He was going to dig. So you feel like out. the reason why he said, Mom, who does this baby look like? You felt like it was because he wanted the baby, but he just wanted to be sure. He's looking yes. for something that wasn't there. Yes. My problem is, it was. It's, after the fact, after he passed, two years passed. I went on with my life, okay? Grieved for two years. That's why I didn't buy Wait a minute, let me, let me finish. And those are the worst two years of my life. <sighs> those are the worst two years of my life. <sighs> so to know Georgie has a child, why wouldn't I try to find out? And how come it took so long? That's, so that's if I'm not, if I wasn't here today, that baby could be a, t a teenager and not know whose dad is. If I didn't step in, you know, this is something she should have done a long time ago. I agree. When it first happened, she should have said we were not sure. I would have went along with her because you told me the truth and said you wasn't sure. That's okay. That was truthful. All right. That's all. I don't, so why did I have to wait till the baby's three years old? Because I find didn't this have out. money to come up with all that money for the test. But you never it's not all about... You never asked. That's what I'm saying. Right. Okay. What about the video? 
The video, the spirit video. What about the video? I want to know what about the video. What do you mean, video? What the video, video you showed me. We're all emotional. All right. it's so not. now what tell me about, about this the video, video you mentioned. This video is when me and my friends were sitting in the car. She's trying to convince that there's a, a video with uh, a spirit of Georgie in the video. Oh, because um, I feel like he is, is this the video? Like, I feel... Hold on, is this the video you submitted to the court? Yes, yes, Your Honor. So you say this is a video of your son, Xavier, and in the video, you can see Georgie's spirit. I said it looks like a spirit. It said it's, a cl it's like a cloud. It is. You okay, talk me through this video. We're sitting in the car right now, and my friend is videotaping him and talking to him. And as you can see on the right, there is like this cloudy thing that comes out of nowhere, and my son looks at it, and then it goes away. Let me see that again, please. It just looks like a reflection. This is slow motion, a white cloud right there. And no one was smoking in the car. I say it was smoke. We don't smoke, smoke in the, the car. car with my son. No, I was just no. about to say, you better no. not be. So that's how I definitely know <laughs> it was not no smoke. And she sent it to me, yes. Yeah, and I sent it to her, and then and that's like, when she was like, oh, my God, what is that? And she told me about her No, I didn't say what is night. that, because I'm not in so the car. So wait a minute. So... What did she tell you about this video? She said, that's Georgie's spirit. And then what did you say to her? I'm like, wow. You know, that's deep. I mean, I'm not a, a religious person. I'm a spiritual person. So... I said, wow, look at this. It looks like At this point spirit. in time, when it comes to Georgie and just listening to his name, it sends chills through my body. So as you look at the video and you see this smoky, cloud-like feature <laughs> come through this video, what do you think? You talk... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's okay. I know it's hard. I'm sorry. Um, I just want to know. I just so want some answers. We just want answers. I just want answers. I need to know if the baby's mine so I can be his grandmother. Because the truth is, you don't want to be attached. You don't no, want to that's why I attached. Nip, when the baby called me Nana. I didn't scream at her about it. I just was like, I need to do something about this now. I need to do something now because that before moment. it gets too out of hand. Yes. So what's the meaning behind him calling me Nana? Is it because he's my grandson or is it because I allow him to call me Nana? You understand, Miss Shemilinski, even if out of the kindness of her heart, even I... out of her grief, she says, just have the baby call me Nana. In the back of her mind, she doesn't know for certain. And the right, real I truth is, that. is you don't know for certain. Right, I understand But... That. I have the results, and we can all find out for certain right now. Jerome? These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. Are you okay, Ms. Brown? Do you need to sit down? Are you okay? Okay. Because there wasn't a blood card available to test the DNA of the deceased, Georgie Long IV, we performed a DNA test with his surviving parents, George Long III and Geneva Brown. The results are as follows. In the case of Shemelinsky versus Brown Long III, when it comes to two-year-old Xavier Shemelinsky, it has been determined by this court. The percentage of relatedness between Ms. Brown and Mr. Long and Xavier Shemelinsky is... <laughs> zero percent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so very sorry. I'm sorry, Georgie. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mrs. Brown. 
is the hardest thing I've had to do. <laughs> I know. And, and for me, that was my only son, so. That was his only son. Would have been nice. <laughs> and I can tell from both of your reactions that deep in your heart, you wanted it to be true. You just wanted to know for sure. Yes, ma'am. I was ready to take the baby and just... <sighs> Miss Shimelins. Look like you knew. No, I don't. I'm shocked. Look My like heart you knew. is beating. I'm shaking. Like I It looked like you knew. I didn't know. I died it was there was two possibilities. But you <clears throat> for you to be that so indulged in him. Because he looks But just emotionally like... you look like you knew. Because I've been crying all day and I'm just I'm just ner like my reactions, I'm shocked. I apologize. <laughs> I really do. From the bottom of my heart, you don't know how much I feel so bad. 